Hello YouTube. We're going to show a really good way that I have found to make these. I know I might have seen it on YouTube. This is a 21 ounce can, bean can. It is the same exact can as the 21 ounce can I had that had cherry pie filling. So a lot of these cans are the same no matter what's in them. Okay. I even checked it this direction. We're scoring to this line, okay? Take your time. Do not cut all the way through. You may make a stick. Take your time. I'm using a pretty good pointed blade. Some of these blades I resharpen because I just resharpen them. Cheaper than buying them. I use them on a lot of stuff. Okay, so we're going to score it there. We'll show that. Then we're going to do our pie cuts. And what we do in our pie cut is we're going to go like this. Let me get a glove on. Here's our score line back here. We're going to score it here. Because I find when I score it there, then work up to the line, it works a lot better. Even stay side line if you have to. If you cut, show right here, it'll show up on the macro. If you cut into this ridge, there, that's better. If you cut into here, you're going to have a crack clear up to here. Try to stop, even if you have to stop before it, you can always trim a little bit. But you see how I cut that? I cut by going this way. It is easier if you lay the can down, but then you won't be able to see my camera. But I'm glad I have a glove on. Then I come up and cut back. And I'll stop even if I'm just so I'm close. I can always do it again. Okay, the idea is when you make all these pie cuts, when you're going to bend these up and down, they'll break out of the hole. So we'll be back when we get this one ready to break out of the hole. Okay, we made this one too wide. We messed up. You get the idea. I like bending it up like this, so I got something to hang on to, because you're going to have to go down in. Otherwise, you're just going to poke it down inside. So I like getting home and bending it like this, is my preference. You see how nice that comes off. And I also will, to prevent splitting, I have to wait and pull this one back up. I made this way too wide. Make sure you score this real good. The better you score this, the easier it breaks. I will go back and file this before I form it because if you have, like I said, if you have one little cut, you start cutting up into here, it'll probably crack on you and you'll see it when you get it made. I have to carefully pull this back up. I made it way too wide. I'd rather show my mistakes and hide them. That way we all learn from our mistakes. We're going to come back to, to the line. you got to go really slow. I want to do one complete one on camera. Nice. Okay, I showed enough. That's how you do it. But... Spend more time than I did. I didn't score it up. These are pretty tough cans, but some cans are softer. The better you score this line, the easier to break because you're cutting like halfway through the tin. We'll be back when we're ready to form that lip with this can. These soup cans work really well for doing that. If they do a can like this, the old style, I made another video. It didn't turn out very good. It's better to make a video showing these because there's more of these cans out here. This will be a smaller burn chamber than you could. I had my cranberry stove. The cranberry can is a smaller diameter, but I want more air space. This is a defective den and can. I will try to get that den out too. But we'll be back once we get this all done. We'll show you how we roll it in there. Okay. And wear your gloves. Even if they're cloth gloves. Find any round punch. Not six side make sure it's round. What you're going to be doing is... You're going to be pushing this in like this. Take your time. The more you take your time, the more quality stove you'll have. Okay? 
He'll be. I kind of turned the punch. I do cheat. I will go set this camp upside down on my wood stove. I will get it nice and hot. Don't use the torch. But while I'm talking about torch, this glue. Watch a video called Rocket Stove Dangers. Just put that in YouTube. I do not know the channel. Burn this stuff off here. It's going to burn, get burned anyway. I use this. This glue, even after the stove goes out, is hot. It will stick to your fingers. I think I showed it in the video where I burned it off. I'm tired of trying alcohol. So I just burn it off the paper. I'm out in the workshop. Just burn the glue off, and I will chase it down. It'll try to run, and I'll burn every little bit of it off of there. Okay? Next, what you'll do is you'll take your can like this. Okay? See how that's in there? See that ridge? Don't do this till you have your can ready. You may not get it out of there. When you do, you'll mess it up. Just keep going like this. Let me show another view. You're doing two sides at one time. Take your can. Keep rolling like this. You see it's about ready to go in there. If you wait, like I said, I would stop about now. Because you don't want to ruin your can when you get the holes in it because they are flimsier. That will pop right in there. Okay, you'll have a nice formed edge. It is hard to get past this ridge right here. It has to pop because this ridge is bigger. I know it's hard to see on the camera. Get the right angle. This little ridge is a little bigger than the can, but it will pop in there. Do it at an angle. Don't force it down. You make it too big. Pop this in at an angle. That's what I've learned. Pop it in at an angle. It's almost like putting a tire on the rim. You ever watch it put a tire on the rim on the bead? You will have it tight enough where this won't fall through. I use a safety lid can opener. I believe in it. It makes a nice edge right here. It gives you more meat left here. When you open up the other way, so you can do it the other way. When you use a regular can opener, you'll have that piece of metal over here. It will be maybe a little stronger doing that, so you can use either can. You don't have to have the safety lid can opener. On the bottom, it's almost a must. Because you have to pound the bottom back on. You can barely see that line where it cuts out here on the outer edge. Uh, I got one that's an OXO. I got it at Target. Uh, they might be spendy. I might have gave almost 20 bucks for it, but I will use it forever. So pop this in at an angle. Don't shove it down like this because then it will be too big a hole. It will go on that ridge. It's just To me, it's like putting a tire on. I put many a tire on by hand. I mount tires by hand. I mounted by hand before, and then went to the shop and had them balanced. So if you pop it in like this, you're not stretching it as far. If you try to shove it down in there, you're going to make it too big. Not to be a know-it-all, but if you want to make a quality one, and you'll see what it did to that ridge. See how it's nice and formed. I want to tell the macro, so take advantage of it. A bent over ridge will always be stronger than a flat piece of tin. If you put a bead roller or bead in a tin, it will always be stronger. If you punch holes, and they make a punch that punches holes in tins that tin that makes this pattern, it makes a piece of tin stronger. I watch a lot of car shows and hot rod TV and stuff. And they'll explain that. I said. When you put it in, don't shove it in. Go in at an angle. Screw it down in there. It is ready to go in there right now. If I went any further, it would be in there. I don't want to put it in until this is made. Okay. You can open this can the regular way. It will give me the metal on the inside. I like it nice and smooth. It's almost a must to have the safety lid opener to get your bottom tap back on. And if your bottom falls, you think your bottom is going to fall off, you can make, I showed another video, Make a little angle brackets, rivet it here, rivet it here. I like this idea because this will give me all the airspace underneath here. Now, I may not put the holes in the bottom of this one. I've been experimenting with that. If you pour a little alcohol to start your wood, it'll tend to collect in the bottom because there's only holes on the side. And it will save your alcohol from running out of the bottom of the stove. But don't put too much. I take a piece of paper and throw it on there. It's going to poof back on you. Okay. We're not going to show uh, drilling on the holes or nothing. I have other videos. We'll just show when we put this can in here. 
In fact, let's just do it and be brave. I'll try to take it out real carefully. Let's just do that. Look how nice that is. That is a very nice stove. I figure if I'm going to make these, I may not make them and sell them. If I went to some place where people gathered it, was interested in this stuff, and I'll lightly tap it. But I'll get it back out of here, but I'll be very careful taking it out. I may take my bottom back off. Also, you're going to use a safety can opener in the house. Mark your can. Find your seam. This is the best way. Find your seam, because I usually take the paper off first. Find your seam and scratch a line here. Because I have found when you put your can back together the same way you cut it off, it seems to go together a lot better. And I'll take my little hammer and I'll and I'll I'll take several minutes to pound that on there. And when I pound I try to go not go this way. Go this way. Don't use the round part, you might miss and dent. Go this way, kinda of hammer out. So your hammer is going like this, pulling away. And it'll kind of flare this and feed it better. I haven't had one of these come off yet. Once they get all nice and sooty, and all that stuff in there, they seem to stick on pretty good. So we will take this out very careful. We may have to take the bottom off again, but that makes a very nice ridge. This concludes my video of how to cut the big can out to get the little can in it. I think I'm going to like this design. 21 ounce can, same as pie filling, with a common small soup can. It'll give me plenty of air space. Let's see if I can get this bottom off. Give you plenty of air space. Bottom and sides. Because the burn saver is going to be big enough for me to boil a cup of water on. I know I made some massive ones, but thought I'd throw that in there. This will be my best design ever. This is what I like. I like this size can. I like the feel of it. I like the air around it. I said, Like I said, I'm not going to put any holes in the bottom of this. I want the air just to suck in here. So it comes in and goes in there. And that way if I use a little alcohol to start it, I'll have like a quarter inch or so before the bottom of the can. I have ruined these by taking the can back out. I'm going to have to get off camera here. I'll do it later. I just say I'll do it later. Because if you do accidentally go in, you're going to have to take it out like at an angle. So don't fret if you do do a mistake to that. You may have to go back and kind of bend that ridge back in a little bit. But I did it just to show how nice it fits. Said so one time, once the can's ready, one time it's never gonna come out of there again. You're not gonna waller out the hole. That's how we call it. Waller. Waller out the hole. Wobble out the hole. Okay. Thanks for watching.